Air travel and being a flight attendant used to be like this. Star once I get you. And now it's more like this. And in this video, I'm going to tell you what the pilots are going to expect from you and the magic phrase that will always get their attention and make them stop what they're doing. Coming up. In the 963 Heavy, flighting 190, maintain 10,000, runway 18 left, clear for takeoff. Hey crew, welcome back. If you don't know me, my name's Kelsey, I'm a 747 pilot. To give you some perspective, as a 747 pilot, where I'm flying currently, we have cargo flights and we have passenger flights. So when I'm flying passengers, usually we have more than 300 people on board. Uh, usually 15 to 20 flight attendants. In my career, I've done everything from that type of flying to as few as zero flight attendants, where that makes me the flight attendant. In my safety briefings, you saw a face that looked like this. That's my smiling face. I didn't make a very good flight attendant, but I kept everybody alive, so I guess I did okay. I'm alive! So in this video, I'm gonna be going over a few things that the pilots are gonna expect from you as a flight attendant. And I'm gonna tell you a magic phrase that pilots use between ourselves that you flight attendants can use that will automatically get their attention, whether it's a phone call or you come up to the flight deck and talk to them during boarding. No matter the time, this phrase will work. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna go over a few things that you should consider if you're just getting into the career of aviation, just some ideas from a different flight attendants that I've talked to over the years. The way I view things is we're a team of either three or four or 24, depending on how many pilots and flight attendants are on there. And we're trying to accomplish this task of getting everybody from one location to another location safely. So I don't really view anybody as being any more or less important. Now from the perspective of general passengers, generally they see the pilots as really important and then the flight attendants are there to bring them drinks. It ain't nothing but a stupid stereotype. And that's really not the way I see it. We're all a team and we're working as a team to accomplish something. The other thing you need to realize is as a flight attendant, in the event of an actual emergency, you're gonna be the ones who are really responsible for saving more lives than the pilots will. I just want you to remember that when you go to work, you guys are all on the same playing field. Now at the end of the day, the captain's gonna have the final decision on what we're going to say or do in that flight. However, your opinion matters. And I want you to remember that if you see something that you're not comfortable with, remember that your opinion or your experience up until this point, it has a value. So often what happens is when I meet flight attendants, especially as they're newer in their career, they don't really wanna speak up or say anything because they don't feel that they have the clout or they don't feel that they have the importance in order to voice their opinion. Remember that we're working as a team to accomplish a task. So the first thing I want you to know is be respectful, but not intimidated. A lot of times new flight attendants their first year of their career, they're a little intimidated about talking to the pilots. We're just the same as you. We're all crew members. We're all trying to accomplish this task. If I can't have some fun with my passengers, why am I here? To fly the plane, go do that. Always feel that that door is open to go in and voice your opinion. The other thing that I want you to consider is that you have 90% of the plane. So in flight, you're gonna see 90% of the plane and all we have is gauges and instruments to tell us what's going on back there. So if you're back there and you see something or you smell something or something seems fishy and your gut is telling you something is wrong or there's a noise that you don't normally hear, it's important that you let the pilots know. So you may see something before it even shows up on our instrument display. So if you smell something or something seems strange, and that doesn't mean some dude smells bad, but something that seems abnormal back there. It's not illegal, it's frowned upon, like masturbating on an airplane. Call us and let us know, or somehow communicate to us and let us know what's going on. In some cases, maybe we have also found out about it and, and they may just say, hey, I'll call you back in a minute, which has happened to me. But for the most part, if you see something or something doesn't seem right back there, Make sure you let us know because you have 90% or more of the plane and you know what doesn't sound right or what seems a little bit different, especially if you've been doing this for a while. Now the next thing is, as a flight attendant, sometimes people aren't going to want to comply with, with what you're asking them to do. There's no reason that people should be rude to you at any stage of this and I definitely, I definitely don't recommend that you tolerate that. That being said, don't ever escalate something and here's what I mean by that. If somebody, if you ask somebody to do something, stow a bag or whatever it is that you're asking them to do, 
and they're refusing to do that. At this point, what you're gonna to wanna to do is ask them again a second time politely or whatever your manual state. If it seems that it's gonna start getting out of control, let the pilots know. And generally what will happen is the captain or the first officer will come back and that gentle touch from the flight crew will usually cause them to comply with what's going on. So if you find uh, someone that you're asking to do something, turn off their phone or buckle their seatbelt or stow their animal or their emotional support carrot or whatever the situation if they're not complying, always feel free that that cockpit door is open, come up there, let us know, and then as a team we can come up with a solution to resolve the issue. Don't ever feel that like you're out there on an island independent and unable to do anything. And that also being said, use and rely your, on your flight crew to help you to accomplish this task. The magic phrase that you can always use if you're talking to the flight crew and doesn't seem like they're hearing you or listening to you, the magic phrase that you wanna use is, I don't feel comfortable with whatever the situation is. Whether it be a smell, uh, a noise, uh, a person, a situation, whatever it is, if you come or you call us and you say, hey, uh, you're taxing out to the runway. Hey, uh, I'm hearing this noise that's clicking or I'm hearing something or I'm smelling something back here that's not normal and I don't feel comfortable with it. That phrase, I don't feel comfortable with whatever that situation is, that is going to send up alerts in our minds, okay, let's pull the plane over if we're on the ground, or let's figure out and find out what's going on and resolve the situation. The reason that is is because pilots are ingrained with something called crew resource management, CRM. If you're already a flight attendant, you've heard it. If you're gonna become a flight attendant, you'll learn it. Crew resource management, again, is where everybody works together as a team. And as a, as a co-pilot, that's a phrase that I'll use with a captain if he's making a decision that I don't agree with. That is the worst idea I've ever heard in my life, Tom. Yes, yes, it's horrible, this idea. And I've already recommended, hey, let's try this other tactic and he doesn't wanna to listen to me. Then the phrasing that I'll use is, Captain, I don't feel comfortable with X. And usually that will send up an alert in his head oh crap, maybe I need to rethink this process so that everybody's comfortable with what it is that we're doing. Again, we're a team trying to accomplish something on the flight deck crew. We're a team on the plane together to accomplish this task. So if you say, I don't feel comfortable with this person, that is going to alert us that we need to really consider what it is that you're telling us. And then we should be listening 100% to what you're saying. Sometimes while we're doing stuff up in the flight deck, we've got a lot of stuff going on, so you might say something that doesn't really register as needing our full attention. But when you use that phrasing, hey, this guy got on board and he's doing something or saying something and I don't feel comfortable with it, we're gonna stop what we're doing and give you our full undivided attention to resolve that issue so you're feeling comfortable back there for the duration of the flight. Now, something I want you to consider if you're new or you're getting into aviation, I've had several flight attendants that really love the career of working in the flight crew industry, which is traveling and seeing the world. They decided to, while they are flight attendants, pursue to be a pilot. What I wanna tell you is if you are really enjoying this and that is a thought or, or an idea that you had about being a pilot instead of being a flight attendant or learning to be a pilot while you're a flight attendant, Pursue that. Don't ever limit yourself. You're Trust me, if I'm able to be a pilot, you're able to be a pilot. I got learning herpes? There is no such thing as learning herpes. I'm blistering up. I'm gonna put a link here into uh, a couple of the different videos that, that will be helpful to you. If it's something that you don't wanna do, well then don't do it. But if it's an idea that you had, or you thought, man, it'd really be cool if I could do that, you should consider it. You know, obviously as a pilot, you're gonna make a lot more money than you are as a flight attendant. There's different responsibilities. I've had several flight attendants that are on my Instagram and have decided to become pilots. And I really enjoy that. As you can kind of see from this video and most of my videos, I always look at us as a crew. And that's why I call the subscribers here, I call them 7-4 crew, because it's a crew of people and we're all trying to work together to accomplish this task of uh, having a successful career in aviation. If you really wanna be a pilot, then you should do it. All right, crew, that wraps up this video about working with flight attendants. If you're a flight attendant or considering to become a flight attendant, in the comments below, I want you to tell me what you expect from your pilots. And if you're a pilot and you're watching this video, I want you to tell me if there's anything that you expect from your flight attendants that I left out in this video. I look forward to hearing from you. Until then, keep the blue side up.